All right, in this lesson, we're going to look at exploration technology, the things that made it possible uh, for the age of exploration to take place. First up in our inventions, it's going to be a rather boring sounding but very important thing called the triangular lateen sail. Now, this was important because previously Europeans had mostly used square sails, and square sails required that you sail with the wind, um, which is going to be a problem, one, if you need to sail against the wind, or if you need to sail up a windy thing like a river or into a bay where you may need to move against the wind um, or find that the wind is constantly changing. Uh, after you've watched um, this brief presentation, you may want to check out the video in the top right of your screen uh, for a little more information about the Latin sail. The other important uh, piece of technology was the caravel, uh, which was a ship design. The caravel had uh, a lot of cargo capacity, but it rode high in the water, which meant even when it was fully loaded, um, it could still move up shallow bodies of water like rivers um, or into shallow bays, which would be nice if you're needing to get out and explore things uh, and chart new territory. This was the versatility side of it. Because of its ability to carry lots of things and yet move up rivers and into shallow bays, gave you a lot of flexibility with this ship, uh, especially, again, if you're needing to start out in, say, Portugal, and end up in the Hudson River in North America. Uh, and likewise, if you would like to see a video for a little more background about the Caravel, uh, the video you see at the middle right of the screen will be posted under the main lesson here um, for your viewing enjoyment. Moving away from ship and sail design, we get some specific tools uh, for navigation. The first of these is the astrolabe. Uh, now, the astrolabe uses the position of the sun and the horizon um, and a knowledge of how to use that tool to let you find out as a sailor what is your latitude. Uh, if it's been a while since you've been in a geography class, remember that latitude is your distance north or south of the equator on the globe. And, uh, if a lot of that equator business sounded foreign. Really what you need to remember is north and south position on the globe. The compass, that, that's probably the navigational tool most of you um, have ever seen, maybe even used if you were a Girl Scout or a Boy Scout. Um, for all of the wonders of a compass with its magnetically sensitive needle um, and all of the things you're supposed to be able to do with it, really for sailors, uh, the compass just lets you maintain a steady course. Right? You keep the needle in the same spot on the dial, and away you go. The astrolabe is going to be much more important um, for charting that course in the first place. Later on, and this would be much later on, this is not what we're going to be talking about in the days of uh, Christopher Columbus, accurate clocks come along. Now, you might think an accurate clock isn't really that important, um, if you're away at sea, what, what does it matter what time of day it is? Uh, but the accurate clock would be very helpful in determining longitude. Um, to understand that, I encourage you to watch the video that appears here in the lower right hand of the screen. I will post that in the lesson. Uh, that will help you understand the importance of clocks in determining your longitude. Now, if latitude was about finding your position north or south on the globe, Longitude is about finding where you are in terms of east and west. And if you're able to determine where you are in an east-west position and a north-south position, you can figure out exactly where you are on the globe. No GPS or smartphone required. All right, uh, continue on now with the lesson uh, by, again, watching the video in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, the other two videos are optional, um, but they have some interesting information, and I would encourage you to watch those.